Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part two of Remember Lot's Wife. Alternately could be called Don't Look Back. I think that was a album by Boston. I don't know long time ago so let's turn our king james bible to genesis chapter 19. Uh, let's see start in verse 15. and when the morning arose then the angels hastened lot saying arise take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city so lots married daughters however many there were and their husbands they were destroyed because they didn't go with them the sons-in-law thought ah eh, he's a crazy guy i'm not you know what, what's he talking about this place is going to be destroyed eh, this guy must have been drinking all night Verse 16, and while he lingered, the men, the angels, laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Probably dragged him out kicking and uh, screaming, right? And it came to pass when they brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Look not behind thee. Don't look back. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. I have no idea why he's saying this, but... Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. So he doesn't want to go to the wilderness... In the mountains, he wants to go to this little city. Verse 21, And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. So, it's morning, right? Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Brimstone and fire. You know what brimstone is? Uh, <laughs> well, brimstone is generally agreed to be burning sulfur. Volcanoes are known to have what they call brimstone, burning sulfur. When burning sulfur, uh, when the fumes hit air and water, it turns into sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is some nasty stuff. We used to use it when I was in water treatment. You stick your hand in water, uh, sulfuric acid, and you will watch your skin vanish. You'll look at your bones, and then your bones will vanish. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. Gets in your lungs, you're going to die. But brimstone is always compared to burning sulfur. So burning sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Verse 25. And he, 
overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But, but, his wife, Lot's wife, looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Don't look back. Uh, so, what, uh, what's the significance of this, you know, don't look back? Is she missing her, you know, the, the home that they had in Sodom and, you know, all the cattle and all the nice clothing she had and her microwave oven and, uh, you know, the waffle maker and, you know, the coffee maker and, yeah. I don't know. But Jesus had quite a few things to say, and, well, so did John. In 1 John 2.15, John writes, Love not the world. Ah, don't look back. Don't be saying, oh, man, I'm going to miss my home. I had it decorated so nice. We had that new paint, and I put down that... The tile floor, oh, it was so beautiful, and those curtains. And we had that that, uh, that Turkish rug, you know. Uh, or was it, oh, I'm sorry, a Persian rug. Yeah, you know, I really miss all that. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world... The love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world. Jesus in Matthew 10, 37 said, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So perhaps Lot's wife was looking back, lamenting about her married daughters. I don't know. Possibly. In the book of Luke, chapter 9, uh, let's see, we'll start in verse 59. Luke 9, 59. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me, or allow me, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. Now, he's talking about those that are spiritually dead, burying the physically dead. Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, listen to this carefully, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And your hand on the plow, you know, you're plowing the field to plant the seeds. I mean, he's using a, this is kind of a parable for a farmer, but it applies to the kingdom of God. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. They're supposed to sow the seeds of the kingdom. But if you're doing that and you look back and you want the things of the world instead of the things of the Lord, that's what he means by no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit 
for the kingdom of God. You want the things of the Lord or do you want the things of this world? Big difference. Matthew 10, 38. Jesus said, He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. We're supposed to take up our cross. Boy, the Jehovah's Witnesses hate that verse. Oh, boy. I, they probably deleted it from their New World Order translation. Probably. You know, Paul, in Romans 8, verse 18, he said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know, I imagine those that make it to the kingdom are going to look at this world like it's just a, a pile of mud, an ugly pile of mud. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, you know, another writing of Paul, a lot of Paul haters out there. You know, Corinth was a church, a city, a city uh, and a church in Greece, just like the New Testament, written in Greek. But in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, it says, Buzz, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. That's a, that's a beautiful verse. That's a good memory verse right there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Whether, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. All right, let's go to the 15th chapter of the book of John. I guess we'll start at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. I don't know how many of you have had fruit trees, but, you know, you cut a branch, especially an old branch that, you know, it's not uh, bearing fruit anymore. You cut it, and then sometimes there'll be two branches that'll come out from that branch that you cut, two new ones. So it'll put out twice as much fruit as it used to, So, if we're not bearing fruit, the Lord will take away that thing that's uh, preventing us from fruit. You know, if uh, a story about Gail Ripplinger. She was teaching at college and had a small Christian ministry. And uh, she, she taught at Kent State University. And she started noticing differences. People would come to her, a lot of times girls, and would ask her, you know, stuff about the Bible and, you know, I'm having problems. And, you know, and she would take them to the Bible and say, oh, here's a good verse um, to uplift you. And they'd take out their modern Bible, their NIV, and it wasn't in there. She's like, what? She's like, wait a minute, let me, you know, let me see this. Well, she was like, uh, Lord, I, I'm going to, when I get time, when I get time, 
I'm going to go and compare these Bibles and see what's going on here. Well, guess what? She hurt her back. Bad. She was laid up in bed for like seven years. Guess what she had time for? Compiling those Bibles. And let me tell you something. The verses that the modern Bibles change and the verses that they delete, when you look at those carefully, it shows you exactly what Satan's plan is. I mean, it couldn't be more clear. She's got some excellent work. I mean, you know, but that's the thing. If there's something stopping you from doing God's work, sometimes he'll he'll take it away from you. Oh, yeah. So, every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Yeah. The words that Jesus speaks are spirit in their life. In John 6, 63, Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Your flesh isn't going to profit you for nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Eternal life. The words are spirit and they're life. Back to John 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned." If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now remember, Jesus said, uh, you know, the two commandments. Right? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all all the law and the prophets. So when you get the Seventh-day Adventists trying to tell you, oh, you got to keep the Sabbath. You know, you got to do this and you got to do that. Eh, I, don't, I don't think so, but I don't know. I do know that in the kingdom we will keep, um, I think it's tabernacles. Tabernacles. But... Uh, being that the Antichrists are in charge of that area where we were would go to keep it, uh, it's kind of impossible now. So, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, 
that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Boy, that's pretty tough to be joyful in today's world. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Uh, we're supposed to love the Lord, our neighbors. You know, I don't think we're supposed to love the Lord's enemies. I'm sorry, but I don't think so. Other people want to love the Lord's enemies? Go for it. But uh, I'm going to pass on that. Verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that people was fulfilled on the cross. Verse 14. Ye are my friends, if, if ye do whatsoever, I command you. You know, there's a lot of people that uh, don't do the things that the Lord says. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. It says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know? Don't look back. Don't want the things of this world. Remember Lot's wife. All right, let's go to Luke 17. Luke the physician. There is a lot of similarities. Jesus compares the end times with what things were like in the past. What things will be like when he returns will be just like it was in the days of Lot and Noah. So let's go. Luke 17, Luke 17, verse 26, Jesus speaking, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given a marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came, and destroyed them all. You know, it's funny. Pre-tribbers will say, yeah, we want to be left, you know, uh, don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be left behind in the pre-trib rapture. Uh, well, yeah, you know, in the days of Noah, you know who was left behind? Noah and his family. They were the ones left behind. <laughs> until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. The flood took them all away. Took the wicked. They were the ones taken. Pre-trib rapture people will tell you the opposite. Verse 28. Likewise, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. They drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Oh yeah, it's going to be just like it. Can you say celebrate LBGT month? Oh, yeah. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, 
let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Luke 17, 32. Remember Lot's wife. The second shortest verse in the Bible. Verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. What? Uh, there's a another verse that clarifies this. Matthew 16, 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For my sake. Who's my sake? Jesus. Mark 8, 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much uh, wraps it up. Remember Lot's wife. Don't look back. Love not the world. And, you know, sometimes the Lord has to take things away from us to make us realize what is important in this life. So, that's all I can tell you. I mean, I've, he did some things in my life which uh, I thought was going to be basically the end of my world. But it ended up being a good thing. And we'll close with this. Romans 8.28. Here's another good memory verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And we know that all things worked together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. His purpose, not ours. All righty. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.